All right, MMA fans, this is Tudor Leonte, and today I have the pleasure to talk with one of the protagonists of the upcoming One on Prime Video 3 co-headliner, Mr. Fabricio Andrade. Hello, Fabricio. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Um, listen, you're going to fight for the One Championship Bantamweight title on October the 21st. We'll discuss about your fight in a little bit. Where are you, Renato? Um, in Thailand. In Thailand. Where are you preparing for your fight? Uh, in Tiger Muay Thai. It's been like uh, the place that I do most of my fights camp has been here in Tiger. I'm guessing you enjoy Thailand. Um, since... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you spent all your training camps there, right? At least in the, for the one championship fights. Yeah, uh, actually, I've been living here for five years already or more. So, like, Thailand has been, like, my home, you know? It's been, like, a place that uh, I really enjoy, like, the atmosphere and then the... The the training tiger is really good. I got a lot of I got a, a lot of good coaches, a lot of partners, and I have been made a lot of friends in this time that I'm here. When did you come up with the decision to move from Brazil to Thailand and to train in Thailand? I'm guessing you moved there to train in Muay Thai at first or the immediately MMA? Actually, uh I come from Brazil to China, and I think, and the time I don't remember which year exactly, but I think 2017, I went. I was living in Brazil, and I was like having like a lot of problems to get in fights because mm -hmm. like there's a, a bit harder, you know. So I moved to China, and the time I was just fighting kickboxing, so I I went there to try to keep more active and try to get some more money than I was making at the time. And I spent like five months in in China, a city called Dujian. And then I moved to Hong Kong. After that, I stayed in Hong Kong about uh, one year. And just like working and teaching some privates and trying to get fights as well. And then eventually when I was able to save like some money, then I come, I moved to Thailand and start to properly live here. You have quite an interesting story. I mean, you already traveled across the world. You have visited many countries and you learned their fighting culture. Um, you know, I, I think that reflects on your in, in your fighting style, you know. Uh, do you agree with me? I mean, uh, it seems like your fighting style is eclectic, uh, has different elements from all over the world. Yeah, for sure. Especially because I've been like fighting Muay Thai first, started Muay Thai, then uh, started to train Jiu Jitsu after when I was still living in Brazil. Then I moved to China, where it's like the kickboxing and the boxing is very strong. And then I train, uh, I live with a bunch of Chinese, you know, so I train a lot with Chinese. And when I come here, like in, in Thailand, we get people from all over the world, you know from across like different promotions as well. So I had the opportunity to train with so many different people, so many different styles and just like adapt everything, like pick what works for me and that adapts to my game. So that's for sure. I got like a bit of everything. Tiger Muay Thai is very popular among fighters nowadays. As you told me, as you just said, there are fighters from all over the world uh, training over there. I would like to hear some of your main sparring partners in preparation for your challenge with uh, John Lineker. Uh, for this fight, I I don't have like, uh, like I used to train with, I've been trained with many, many big names before, but for this fight, like it's been actually hard to get uh, sparring partners because people don't want to spar me. I'm kind of like a, a guy, I don't I don't know, like easy, you know, I always like go really hard in sparring. So I think that was like the most, the, the hardest part for this camp was to get sparring partners. So I had like to always be changing who was coming to spar me, like trying to get three fresh guys all the time to come spar me. So 
it's been that, that was the biggest challenge for this fight was to get people to spar me <laughs> <laughs> are you as much intense in training and in sparring sessions as you are inside the circle <laughs> i would say i'm even more you know because <laughs> like um I, I train like I fight, you know, all my trains is like a fight. I don't like to lose even in train, you know, I have like this crazy mentality that I have to be always like a true level above everyone, you know. So every time I spar, like I'll try to drop everybody. So my mentality is is a, is really crazy uh, even in train. I always like push myself to the limit. If it's a cardio, if it's a, any train I do, I want to be the best. I want to be better than everyone, you know. So that's the same for sparring. Man, and that mentality reflects um, in your latest uh, results. Uh, you competed, you already competed twice this year and both uh, fights ended shortly past the one minute mark. How do you feel about uh, being arguably the best up and coming fighter in one championship at the moment? Feels really good. Feels really good, of course, like, because... You know, I've been dreaming to do all all of what I'm doing right now, and like, I I would I would lie if I'm say I'm surprised with everything I'm doing because I expect to do all of that, but to actually like dream about everything and see everything happening is is a feeling that is is even hard to explain. You know, like some days I wake up and then see. All of what I'm doing, all of what is happening and change in my life you now, and it is incredible. It is incredible indeed. And uh, you deserved all the success so far. And of course, you deserve your title shot again um, against John Lineker um, on October the 21st. Um, what do you expect from your upcoming opponent? I mean, we all know Lineker, but I would like to hear, you know, your point of view on your upcoming opponent. Sorry, he cut a little bit on the end. Oh, sorry. What do you think about uh, John Lineker and his fighting style in general? I think he's uh, he's really tough. You know, everybody knows he's been around for a long time, but. He also very predictable, you know. It's not like anything that you special that you should expect from him. All of his fights, you know what he's gonna do. He's gonna come and throw hands. So he he's a very predictable predictable opponent. Of course, you cannot underestimate a guy with the the story that he have everything that he did across of different promotions and to come and become a one of the champion. So of course he deserves everything that he have right now, but I believe he's a very predictable, predictable fighter, and I believe like his strong weapon is also his weakness, because because he he becomes a very predictable opponent and he got no, I he's he don't got anything that can surprise me on this fight. I don't know what he's gonna do. I read on the inter on the internet and on Instagram. I can't remember where, but still, I read that you promised to turn him into a wrestler after he he will take uh, your shots. Is that your plan? Yeah, uh, he said he won't shoot. You know, he maybe like give the impression that he thinks I am going to shoot, but definitely I'm not shooting for takedowns on this fight. But I believe so once he he feel my power and he gonna be he gonna get first aid on this fight and he gonna try to do anything to win, and I probably gonna turn him to a wrestler. It doesn't mean he gonna put me down, but he he he'll probably try, but it won't work. Um, you sound confident enough. I would like to hear a prediction for your fight. You're going to fight across five rounds. When do you think that the clash is going to be stopped and you will become uh, the new champion? I am prepared to fight for 10 rounds, you know, but I don't I don't believe he he will be able to take all the damage that I'm going to bring from the start of the fight. I don't think he'll, he'll be able to finish even the first round. So I think I'll finish him the first. That sounds uh, very much like your fighting style, considering that you have plenty of first round submission victories. 
Best of luck with that uh, in, in general, Fabricio. Uh, before I let you go, uh, I'd like to discuss something else with you. You were 22 when one championship signed you. What did you think when they offered you a contract, you know, back in 2019, I, I, I guess, or 2020 it was? Yeah, it was in 2020. Um, and the time I was already trying to sign with them, you know, there was already like a goal that I had because I was not, I was not fighting for almost one year, but I was already still training a lot, you know, and just like mentalizing that I would sign with them. And when COVID come, they needed like fighters that were in Thailand. So that was like the perfect opportunity for me at the time. And I got like a short notice fight in like three or four weeks, you know, but like I said, I was already trained all the time, you know, I, I was not fight for one year, but I was already like trained. I was still trained and prepared, like just waiting for opportunity. And in my brain was like, it's now is my time to show everybody that the fighter that I am and the level I am. And that was when I come and surprise everybody because nobody knew me in the time I was coming from three to record fighting a veteran in the promotion. Uh, everyone saying I was going to lose and you know, everyone was like, this guy is not even going to touch me. Now is my time to show everybody the fighter that I am. I recall your fight with uh, Shoko Sato. I was really surprised by your performance you know, on that occasion, considering that Sato is quite a, an experienced fighter. You are very young, my friend, but you are still very, very skilled and you, you defeated him by decision on that occasion and it was like a really well-deserved uh, decision. My congrats on that, for real. Thank you. Thank you very much. It will uh, soon be your 25th birthday, you know, in just a few days. Are you doing something in particular for that occasion? Uh, no, really, no. It's very close to the fight right now. So I'm just like, I'm going to wait to have two things to celebrate after I win the belt. Okay, so if you don't mind, uh, allow me to wish you happy birthday um, a little bit in Thank advance. Um, before I let you go, do you have any last messages you would like to share with us today? Uh, I hope everybody is as excited as I am for this fight. You know, I think it's going to be Besides everything, it's going to be a great fight and a great show for everybody that likes to watch MMA. And I hope everybody is going to come watch and see what I'm going to do on 21st of October. I'm really looking forward to watching this fight. Fabrizio, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with the upcoming fight and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future, my friend. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.